This is so crazy. Okay, hopefully this is working. I'm just in a little cafe in Spain right now. The internet at my place wasn't working, so I had to come out here. I had an amazing crepe just now. But we are here. This is so weird, man. <laughs> Anyone on? Nope. Hope you guys are enjoying the music. It's playing in the background. Let's see if this pops up on the uh, actual Facebook thing. Yeah. That's so cool. Alright, so this is the first time I've ever done something like this, so if I do come off a little bit nervous, it's because I am. Okay, um, before we get started, um, I just want to uh, briefly introduce myself and I share with you my story before we start the whole uh, hour-long Q&A in about 15 minutes. So my name is Jesse Pham. Um, I've always uh, dreamed about traveling the world, and the thing is, uh, when I was in high school and when I was in college for that one semester, I've always dreamed about traveling the world. But the thing is, I had a very problem, huge problem. I hated going to school. I felt that college was the one and only option for me. I just did it because I wanted to try it out, because all my friends were doing it and just fall in the herd, so to speak. And um, there was a time where I just, I just sat in class just thinking to myself, when the hell am I ever gonna use this in life later on, after I finish this class or even graduate, so to speak. If I did ever do that, which I didn't, actually. So, um, yeah, I just, I just realized like, it was not for me. Um, I just had a very difficult time in class and I had very bad grades in high school so um, I just wasn't a good learner while sitting indoors. Uh, so uh, yeah I just decided to you know what um, I just really want to travel the world so I decided to uh, do a personal training program which was the reason why I went to uh, that college um, but the thing is, uh, there was, uh, I just blanked out right there, but the thing is, I traveled to uh, Florida to uh, attend this whole program, and the thing is, I had an amazing time at this four months, meeting uh, a lot of like-minded people, I was actually felt smart for the first time, I was learning about things I wanted to learn about, everything was very practical. And um, yeah, it was super cool. And the thing is, uh, if any of you guys that have graduated, you guys can probably relate to this. Um, when that four months came to an end, I was just thinking, shit, I don't want this to be over. I don't want to go back home. I don't want to live with my parents so I can find a job and, um, and, then, and just do that whole nine to five thing. And I, I just really dreaded it. Um, then, uh, yeah, I decided like the whole 9 to 5 route wasn't my whole ordeal. Um, fast forward a little bit, uh, there was a lot of like options for me to uh, travel the world. I was just like desperately searching on Google. And the option that appealed to me was uh, an online business stuff. But um, not, not to say that that's the only option that you have to do for it to work out for you like that's I don't want to say like yeah you need an online business so you can travel the world that's not true um, but fast forward a little bit um, the whole online business thing online thing wasn't working as I expect it, it's, it's much harder than I originally thought I thought that I can get it up in a few months and then once that happens I can just start traveling around and life will be great um, so I, I reached a part where I was just like, shit, uh, I really, really needed to get out of here. I was living in the desert. 
Uh, I was very isolated. I didn't have any friends or anything like that. Uh, I was living with my uncle, helping him out uh, with his business. Um, and yeah, it just hit a point where I just had enough was enough. Um, I'm still young and I there was a lot of points where I was thinking uh, like shit man, everyone else your age, I was 20 at the time, is having the time of their life. But here you are sitting uh, behind this computer in the middle of the desert just wasting your youth away. Uh, hopefully some of you guys can um, relate to that. That uh, you've always dreamt about traveling the world and uh, you kind of feel that you're pushing it back, that one day you'll do it. But the thing is, we're not going to get any younger from this moment on where a lot of people say we're getting older, but if you really look at it, we're kind of dying. We're getting closer and closer to death, like even tomorrow I might die. So um, those type of realizations got me going and uh, made me think like shit. Uh, I need to travel as soon as possible and I won't get into the whole uh, exactly what I was going through, but um, I ended up thinking, you know what, let's just buy a one-way ticket. And of course, I had a lot of internal resistance. One of them was I had no one to travel with. I'm pretty sure you can relate to that. Um, I don't have enough money. I don't know anyone overseas. I'm scared that I couldn't navigate through everything. Um, what else? I was scared to be kidnapped. That was really I, I watched Taken and that that movie did scare me a bit I didn't want to be kidnapped by um, you know the whole thing and uh, be left like held to ransom and then I'll die overseas and a little crazy shit like that just because I watched movies like that um, so yeah I just I just had this massive desire to travel the world and one thing led to another uh, that made me take some massive risk uh, at the time, I had no idea um, what to do. No one has done it before me. But uh, I decided, you know what, Jesse, you're not getting any younger. If you really want to do this, you should do it now. Uh, I made a shift from my thinking of stop focusing on the obstacles, but started looking at the opportunities. And that, once you look at the opportunities, that's when things really blow up. And uh, since then, um, that was September 22nd, 2012, that I took off to Sweden on a one-way ticket. Um, and that journey from then till now has taken me on a uh, quite insane adventure. Uh, I've learned a lot of things. I've met incredible people from around the world. I've tried amazing food. Uh, a lot of, I, I really can't put it into words, um, but the, the journey has been really fucking fun. And um, the thing is with this whole webinar, what I'm trying to do is just to share, give that back. Um, back then, I, I just remember like, fuck, I really want to travel the world, but no one has done it before me. It's kind of unsafe. It's kind of like uh, you want to see someone do it before you do it. Um, so uh, yeah, I just want to share more of my experiences, what I've learned to help you guys out, what you're going through, because yet I, I said again, um, I've been through it all. I've been through very intense experiences. Uh, for example, I got locked up in an immigration cell in London, and hopefully this will not weak signal. Okay, hopefully this won't go off. Let's just ignore that. But yeah, uh, I got locked up in an immigration cell in London. I took a cruise across the Atlantic Ocean. And um, what else have I done? Um, I took long bus rides and gone through very sketchy areas. Um, I flew into Ukraine from Russia when the, uh, the plane got shot down. My flight was literally like a few days after that. I didn't know because I don't watch the news. But I still decided to hop on that flight because I needed to leave a country. There was no other option for me and I already booked it. And so I did that. I was scared as hell. I didn't die. I'm here now sharing those experiences with you. Um, 
So, with that said, I'm kind of rambled on a bit just to share with you a bit of my experiences. If you're watching this for uh, the replay, you can like fast forward if you don't give a shit. Um, but yeah, let's let's see. There's four viewers. You guys want to say hi? Winnie Fong, I see that you joined. Welcome. I hope you're enjoying the uh, Bob Marley music in the playing in the background. Um, but yeah, let me look at my uh, notes real quick. All right, so let's just dive into it, right? You guys want to know? You guys want to know one? How much money do you need to save up before you begin traveling? Two, how to travel without running out of cash? How to overcome fear of traveling alone? Four, how to easily find people to travel with? And last but not least, how to make money while traveling the world? So, first things first, how much money do you need saved up before you begin traveling? Thing is, man, or girl, you don't need much at all. When I took off overseas uh, with that little intro story, I took off uh, with about like $600. I had no income coming in. Uh, I had no job. Uh, I ended up staying with a friend of mine who helped uh, that I met in college. So that helped me uh, reduce costs drastically because Sweden is a very expensive country, which I did not know about. And uh, it's very important that you know something like that as well. Like you need to know how much it costs to the place you're traveling in. Because if you're on a tight budget like I was and you tra travel into a very expensive place, it's not smart. It's, uh, you're going to have to make, cut a lot of corners and s sacrifice a lot. I ended up sacrificing my health and I was very skinny. Uh, I'll probably post up put this in a video somewhere, just me talking about the struggles of what I went through to actually make this all happen. So for example, um, let's go back to the whole how much you need. So I had 600 bucks. Um, I didn't need to pay for accommodation. I was lucky enough that I had a set of skills, so it was personal training for me. I just, uh, I did, what I did with my friend was hey, like, hey, if I personally train you and I help you with fitness and I clean around the house. I'm just offering value. Would that be okay if we could do like an exchange? So he will allow me to stay with him and food was actually included as well. And uh, we had a good friendship and that helped me cut costs drastically. So just like that, I didn't need to spend that much money um, just to take off overseas. Um, thing is though, when you... Uh, take off overseas, make sure you buy the right tickets. Um, you probably know me through um, that little uh, page where I shared the cheapest flights. If you watch through the videos and went through it, you'll realize that I spent about $700 on my flight over to Sweden from LA. I could have got that flight for about 200 something bucks and it would have saved me a lot of money so it can eat more and not have to sacrifice my health because uh, I was eating crackers, drinking water to get rid of my hunger at times. I was waiting for my friend to uh, like, hey, I'm hungry, so I would join him. I didn't want to eat all his food, so I just waited till him, till he was ready to go. Um, so going back to how much you need saved up, really, if you have more than $600 saved up, if you have like four figures, five figures, you can travel for a long time. A lot. It's, it's ridiculous. Right now, I'm spending on average um, about $600 a month. Um, and I'm living really well, actually. I'm, right now, I'm in Spain. I travel here and there. Uh, I was just in, recently in London, which is a very expensive place. $600 uh, it won't go that far in London, but you can do little things like staying with friends and um, exchanging value, whatever skills that you have in exchange for a place to stay, food, da da da. So, um, thing is, if you guys just if you just have the will to really want to travel the world, and you say uh, you know you you have the concerns that you don't have enough saved up, that will alone will take you through everything. It will get you through 
all the struggles. It'll get you through. It'll help you. It'll actually help you be very creative, um, as it has with me. And uh, I'll be sharing more uh, uh, things I've learned throughout the way. Um, <clears throat> so, if you have like a thousand dollars, if you have two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, and you choose uh, the right countries based on the budget that you have. It's very hard for me to say exactly. I, I need like a person to use as an example. Um, so things like that. Uh, if you have people to travel with, if you travel with someone, it's going to cut costs pretty uh, like more than half. So, for example, if you are getting a place on Airbnb and it's about forty to fifty dollars a night, which is pretty expensive. Um, but if you have someone with you, that fifty dollars is now twenty-five dollars. And if you uh, add a third person, that becomes uh, not so good with this. Maybe sixteen dollars, just like that. So you can be strategic with it. Um, you have to budget very well if you uh, want to extend your travels. What I see that's a huge um, problem with people on the road is. Yeah, I understand that when you take off onto a new country that you're excited, that uh, life's great, and uh, you, not you specifically, but the people I've seen end up going on an all-out spending spree. They don't really think about the long term, um, so they buy, it's ridiculous sometimes, like $500 a night on just drinks alone. Um, they stay in like super fancy uh, like hotels and stuff. And it cuts down your, your costs quite a lot. But the thing is, if you can not be so much of a prima donna and be more flexible and not complain about this and that, you can stay even like in nice Airbnb places instead of a hotel and you're saving, I don't know, like hundreds of dollars for, for an entire week if you decide to do that. Um, if you want to really lower the cost, just hop on, uh, like, stay in hostels. Hostels are super uh, inexpensive these days. Um, so little things like that. Um, so to really round this up, you don't need a lot of money to travel the world. Just whatever you have, you just spend it. Um, for me, like I'm trying to say now is 600 bucks for me when I took off. No idea what the fuck I was doing. Um, which you're probably thinking, how the hell is $600 for three years? Well, I'm going to expand on that on the last point, how to make money while traveling overseas. So now that we got that out of the way, how much money do you need? Whatever you got, if you know how to use it correctly, where to go, uh, if you're traveling with people, if you choose to cut some corners, and it's not really that bad, you're going to cut some luxuries. You can still eat out. It's not like I'm telling you to eat crackers like I did. You just have to be very smart with it. So how to travel without running out of cash? So this goes back to the first point I briefly mentioned. Um, a lot of people just spend like crazy. The thing is, you need to set up a budget. You need to really, before you take off overseas, you need to have researched and know um, the exchange rate from your currency to where you're traveling to. And for example, for me, if I go to London, it's so expensive. I, it, it, it's like so painful for me. Like. If you hop on the tube, it's like five pounds without an Oyster card for one stop on the tube. And now if you go over to, for example, let's say Thailand, that's probably a bus journey all the way down to the islands. It gets super cheap like that, so it's so important that you know where you're flying into and have a very strict budget um, uh, month by month. I like to play around with like a thousand dollar per month budget for it's it's just easier for you guys to really grasp the concept. For me, I play around with six hundred dollars per month, uh, more or less. Usually less actually. The the best I've done was three hundred dollars a month, and that was in Ukraine. Um, so also to help you avoid running out of cash, you need to really take advantage of these best deals. So. Flights, for example, biggest cost for everybody. A lot of people will spend like seven hundred, eight hundred thousand of dollars for flights. 
on, to, just to go on the opposite side of the world. But the thing is, with the technology these days, there's much more uh, airlines that are giving you insanely incredible deals. For example, uh, Norwegian. Norwegian is an amazing airline. It's, it goes worldwide. So people, let's, let's jump into an example. So LA, LA to Copenhagen. And it's very important that you, you just don't fly into whatever city you want to go. You want to fly into hubs. Um, I already talked about this in the training, so I won't go too in-depth into it. So LA to Copenhagen is about $250. Yes, these companies are charging very inexpensive, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's not luxurious. Uh, Norwegian is actually a very good airline that I enjoy a lot. Uh, the, how they make their money is just like their upsells. Uh, for example, if you want to check in your luggage, you have to pay like 30 bucks. If you want to eat food, they charge like $15 and they have just like all these little things. But if you can choose to like, oh, you know what, I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going, going to, um, for example, eat the food. For me, I really just don't eat the food on the uh, Norwegian. It's not that great. Airline food's not the greatest. And uh, if you guys know about intermittent fasting, just use that as in a, a window when you're, you're burning fat. So things like that, you fly into Copenhagen, that's like 250. And now if say you're in Copenhagen and you want to fly to London or let's say Barcelona, there's flights from Copenhagen out to all these areas. Just hop on skyscanner.net and just type in your location, Copenhagen in this case, and wherever you want to go. If you want to be more spontaneous and feel uh, adventurous, just type in flexible and it'll show you all the cheapest flights wherever in Europe and all throughout the world. And you can go for, it's kind of stupid cheap how uh, travel can be these days. So just like that, you're cutting costs, you're saving thousands of dollars on flights. So you can avoid running um, out of uh, cash. Um, also, uh, you have to be strategic with your spendings. Uh, so just say you're on a strict budget. Don't try to eat out with like so much. It can get very, very uh, expensive eating out, especially in cities like London. But if you choose to go to a more inexpensive place, um, like Ukraine or Thailand, Vietnam, uh, I believe uh, Colombia is another one, you can eat out and eat very well. For example, you guys are in the US, uh, you pay about $5 for a combo meal, you can go to a restaurant and eat a very like big main course and even a drink as well. So it, there, you have to kind of view that your spendings as value. If I'm paying an X amount of dollars, is the value there? So for example, um, if I get a massive plate of so much food and I paid $10 for it, the value is there because it's going to keep me full for a longer period of time and I don't have to spend that much money on uh, food. But let's say you go to London, you go to this fancy restaurant that gives you like a very small, like but it tastes delicious uh, food and then you end up paying 20 pounds for it. 20 pounds is about like 30, 35 dollars, excuse me. The value is just not there. So you have to be strategic with your spendings. Um, it's really cool to see all you guys out here. I wasn't expecting this. Um, so Winnie Fong, Emily, uh, Laura and Tom, hello and welcome. I've been rambling on for like 23 minutes so far. Thank you very much for joining this little live call. Uh, we're right now on how to travel without running out of cash. So uh, as I went into the uh, being more aware of where you're traveling into, that's one aspect. Having a budget is a huge aspect. It's the quickest way to travel whenever, whenever you want. Another one is um, if you're traveling by yourself, it can get uh, quite pricey. But if you find people to travel with, you can cut the cost. And uh, I'll be talking about that right now. How to overcome the fear of traveling alone. So this is a huge one for me. Uh, back then, very socially awkward. I uh, didn't um, have that confidence. Um, I, I wasn't in a good place, to say the least. What's up, David? Um, yeah, so uh, a huge fear of mine was uh, I didn't want to travel alone. And 
it was just a very scary thought for me. I thought people were like, yell at me, reject me, and all this stuff, and it puts you in a weird place. But the thing is, what I realized was this. The fear of traveling alone. Okay, that is a fear. But what you need to do when you have fear, whatever fear it is, you need to find something that's, that, that something, that fear right there, needs to be more, it needs to surpass the fear of traveling alone. So I'm going to share with you something very eye-opening, hopefully. So if your fear right here is traveling alone, my fear that got me started, that made me like, shit, actually, this is nothing. This scares me. So going back to that little story of mine when I told you that uh, I was living in the desert, just like working away on this little online business thing, and um, results weren't there, but the realization I got was this. It was just my 20th birthday. I just turned 20. I was sitting in the middle of the desert, no friends. Didn't hang out with anyone on my birthday. And on your birthday, it's supposed to be the best day of the year. Uh, people saying happy birthday to you, having a fun time, partying, and having like amazing meals, conversations. But I had none of that. I was in the desert doing nothing. And it was a harsh realization. It's like the ego is just squashed. I can't kind of rasp like, oh, Jesse, you're a cool guy. No, like, no, that's complete bullshit. You just can't, dude. You're by yourself. Like, just, what are you doing? And here's the thing, I started reflecting back on the entire year. It was 2012 at the time. So my birthday's on June 3rd, which is coming up. That's six months, and I just think, I just thought, wow, I remember the night when I was kind of envisioning how my 2012 year would look like. And all of a sudden, it's six months later, and it flew by so fast, and if, like, all the days blended into one to the another. Like, days for me felt like seconds, weeks felt like hours, and a month felt like a day for me. That's how fast time was going by. And then, the realization that changed it all for me. Uh, can you guys hear me? By the way, I know these Spaniards speak pretty loud. Can you guys hear me? All right, they're not talking that loud. So back to the big realization that I got that changed everything for me. I'm there, 20 years old, and I'm thinking, okay, Jesse, you're sitting there, no friends, no social life, no like non-existent dating life. Um, you're out of shape, all the shit. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so there's a little um, delay. Awesome. Oh shit, that's so cool. Okay, welcome, Cage. Um, so the huge realization I got was, okay, Jesse, you're 20 years old. Imagine you're doing the same exact thing every day after day, right? Now you're 30 years old, just like that. And you've been doing the same exact shit every single day for 10 years. And at the time, for me, I hadn't experienced much. And for me, the idea of not experiencing much of life was eating me alive. And this really put it into perspective for me, like, shit. That made me realize, like, time is the most valuable asset you'll ever have. No matter if I have a billion dollars right now, I can't turn back. I can't go back to the 18-year-old Jesse Pham and give him what I know now so I can travel more. Steve Jobs, one of the most richest guys in the world who passed away, couldn't even save his own life because... Of his, of his uh, health. So that just to put that into perspective, time's something that you never get back. And I know that you probably hear all the fucking time, oh, you can travel later, do it after you uh, graduate. But the thing is, you have something, those people that are giving you that advice, saying to wait to travel, I'm just gonna have a wild guess and assume that they're pretty old. There are more of the baby boomers generation. And that's the advice that they took. Not to travel. They wanted to wait until they reached um, retirement so they can start traveling full time. And going back to that realization, 
if you just pause and just think about it, I hope you like after this call, just think about it. Just think where you are right now, whatever age you are, if you're 21 years old, if you're 18 years old, if you're 23 years old, what happens if you're 33 right now and you've been doing the same exact thing you're doing right now? If you just think about that after the call, I'm going to be talking quite a lot on this one. So that right there made the fear of traveling alone surpass that fear of doing the same exact shit every single day and I'm 30 years old and not having experienced much at all of my life and I'm still like awkward I haven't developed myself I don't know what to do with my life I'm still trying to discover myself it just surpassed the fear of traveling was nothing compared to this realization and I hope that with a little uh, reflection and stuff that you guys can see that there's much bigger fears than that actually traveling alone. Um, so with that huge um, little idea, I'm going to help you guys how to find, how to easily find people to travel with. So um, when I was sitting there in the desert, I just daydream night after night about traveling. I, I remember there are times when I'll just be laying in bed staring at the ceiling at like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, just desperately thinking like, fucking hell, Jesse, why the fuck aren't you traveling right now? And I'm just thinking like, what, what else is out there? What, what is there more to life than my day-to-day -day life now? And um, that right there just kept that vision of me wanting to travel alive. It, it's super important as well. I, I know I'm kind of going off the... Uh, the trail, but it's the thing is, if you're gonna try to find people to travel with, and no one around you wants to travel, that should tell you something. It's because the people who are actually traveling the world aren't usually around your your inner circle. The people in your inner circle are more, I would assume, the more traditional living type. Everyone who wants to travel, the people that you want to find that will travel with you, they're out there. They're out there traveling the world. And the best way to uh, meet those people is you have to take that leap of faith and take off and travel. But uh, there's a little cool uh, thing I did back then. Uh, when I decided to take the leap of faith to travel to Sweden, I wanted to... Um, experienced the nightlife out in Stockholm but I had no like I didn't know anybody so what I did was and it's an amazing little tool that you should use now including using this group is if you can just think about like a, an interest what's your hobby what do you like to do what passions do you have type that in Facebook and then type in the city that you're traveling to and then once you enter that into Facebook, you're going to get groups. It's sometimes going to be public. A, a group just like this one right here that I have for you guys. There's going to be multiple groups that have people that have the same interests as you and are living abroad. So that's, that's a huge thing that you can use like today to uh, like kind of expand your network. And uh, that will also help you... Uh, ease the the fear of traveling alone. Now you now you met someone over the internet. It might sound weird, but it's like it's gonna be normal. But in a few years, all this stuff that I'm talking about now and all these strange things with, with a Snapchat and all that, it's just gonna be normal. So when you do that, now you have more peace of mind. Like oh, I do know someone who's living in Stockholm or uh, Barcelona or uh, Colombia or anything like that. So now that you have that fear of traveling alone kind of like pushed down and you get out there, let's say you stay in hostels. Stay in hostels because that's where all the travelers go to. People who want to take off overseas like you who just had enough, wanted to kind of discover themselves. That's something I hear quite a lot. And it's, it's something that you should do. That's exactly what I've done to kind of discover myself. Um, we'll just take off overseas because I just want to break away from the whole habits and stuff. So when you do that, um, you go to hostels, now you're like meeting people from around the world. And the cool thing about hostels 
Everyone who's staying in the hostels has one huge common interest, and it's traveling the world. Everyone who's there is in living in a hostel, like 99% of the time, is because they love to travel there. They want to like um, stick, like lower their spending costs so they can keep traveling the world and all that stuff. Okay, Cage, I saw your question. I will go back to that. Um, so, things like that. Um, Things like this group right here. I, I've created this free group of people like who want to travel the world. I, I really hope you guys take advantage of this. People, the people that are joining this call right now, I know you guys are more proactive. You guys are like action takers. You guys want to learn more about all this stuff, and that's amazing. So this group right here are people who want to travel. You guys should start connecting with each other. There's like a guy like Cage right here who's like asked me questions like he, I can tell that he's interested the people who didn't the people who received my emails and decided not to join uh, this group for this call those aren't the action takers people who are in this group they're the action takers these are the people you want to talk to so you guys can organize a trip together this summer and then uh, it might sound weird like oh yeah I just organized a trip with some random stranger off of Facebook and now we're meeting but dude you meet them in person you start sharing experiences together, uh, having like amazing conversations. You're like building a bond between you and this stranger at such an accelerated rate that you're gonna look back on it for years. I know that now because uh, I know I'm saying that now because when the people I met in Thailand, for example, in 2013, when I was first there. We had a common interest, and because of that, we hung out with each other a bit more, and that just reinforced our bond. And for me, I was thinking like, "Wow, I can't believe there's other like-minded people out there." I lived over two, like two decades at the time, um, just living my day-to-day -day life, just thinking, "Oh shit, I'm so alone. Like, there's no one else that wants what I want. Everyone just wants to go to college, and they just party and get drunk all the time. They don't really care about." like breaking away and just like really taking control of their life and I thought I felt so alone um, back then because uh, I had no one to connect with but now with the internet it's just making it so much easier for people that have the same interests who think the same way it's so much easier to connect you guys are from around the world and that's that's an amazing thing that we couldn't even do back then like, not, not us but more of our parents our grandparents like just the technology is just blowing up exponentially and just giving us opportunities that are just changing the world and in a very very positive way um, so uh, with that said with the whole technology taking off how to make money while traveling the world okay I just hold on before I dive into it my voice is killing me show you around the cafe a little bit Spanish people all right back to me unfortunately okay so how to make money while traveling overseas you have to realize that with the whole technology curve just blowing up the past few years um, the internet was born I think in 95 and I, I think we are three years old, five years old, depending on your age, we're less than ten years old. And before that, there was nothing like that. Our parents, our grandparents, they had to, like, if they wanted to talk to someone, like, for example, in a place for Skype or Facebook, they need to walk, like, or go on a telephone or walk across the street to meet them. They're, they just didn't have these opportunities that we had. The fact that I'm talking to you through this phone while in Spain in midnight actually <laughs> it's pretty late uh, and you guys are in 3 p.m. in LA 6 p.m. in New York and uh, 8 a.m. in um, uh, Sydney Australia that's an amazing thing and it really I, every day I think about this how we're having so many amazing opportunities blowing up right in front of us just today actually I saw this video that Sony's creating this contact lens that will allow you to record everything 
and this contact lens will adjust the exposure and get like it will, the footage it showed was like exactly how you see through your eyes just to give you an idea where the world is heading and also with 3d printing um, that's a completely thing that will blow your mind um, but let's go back to how to make money while you're traveling um, okay so with that said the, the jobs back then that force you to be stuck in one location it's not going to exist that much anymore. So, for example, um, the, a very popular um, thing that people are using these days to make money online is teaching your language over this, like over Skype, over Facebook, over uh, like FaceTime or anything. Anything that you can talk to someone live, one on one, you can make money overseas. Uh, while you're traveling the world. So, <clears throat> being an American myself, I was very ignorant. Uh, I, I thought America was just a very, I think America just is like in its own little world. So when you start traveling overseas and you start seeing that, wow, people that speak English as a second language, so for example, Swedish, uh, Dutch, uh, Spanish, all these countries, they need to learn English if they want to communicate with someone from another country. So if a Spaniard wants to communicate with someone from Poland, they need to learn English to speak. And I'm going to come back full circle here. And the same thing with the Polish person. The Polish person needs to learn English to communicate with that person. So English is a very, very valuable tool and we're very fortunate to know it. Um, so you can really ho hopefully understand that English is like a tool, a skill set that you can use right now to make money while you're traveling the world. For example, if you speak English as a native language, people are very, people that don't speak it as a first language, they're very, I would say, envious. Um, they're kind of self-conscious of their English because they kind of compare their English, the second speaker, uh, to yours. And when I say you, I'm, I'm assuming that you're someone that can speak English uh, fluently. So saying if I'm Polish or if I'm Ukrainian, I'm speaking to you and English is my second language, I would feel self-conscious that you that of my English in speaking to you because they're so judgmental, they're thinking, oh, it's just shit. Um, there was a time in Thailand uh, I met this gorgeous uh, Norwegian chick and uh, she was very, she just wouldn't talk to me. And I ended up talking to her friend and her friend was telling me like, yeah, she likes you, she's just, she's self-conscious about her English. Um, and I just couldn't believe it. And then I, 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 I have an idea why. So I asked her, is it because her teacher or professor or whoever taught her English gave her a bad grade and stuff like that? And she said, yeah, she has bad grades in English. And like that, her self-esteem just gets crushed. Just to give you an idea of how foreigners think of their English. So the thing is, people are willing to pay you to, to, uh, for you to teach them English. Just normal like this, like, uh, hello, how are you doing? You help them pronounce it. And just like that, like for example, I have a buddy who's uh, learning Polish. He's hopping on Skype uh, like every hour for a day and he's, it's super convenient. Just hops on this call, gets taught Polish for one hour and then the guy on the other end just made cash, just like that. And if he was, if he was more aware he wouldn't need to have to be in that one location. He wouldn't need to be in Poland. He could travel around. It's just like a location independent thing. If you are working at McDonald's or at a gym, you can't take off whenever you want because you, you need to be there. But now that this whole, this age that we're living in now, we're not forced to be locked down in one location any longer. Um, so just to give you an idea of a job that's teaching English over, uh, not in, overseas, I mean, teaching English online 
and then you just hop on a call whoever if you when you find uh, clients you teach them English you're in I don't know let's just say China Japan uh, let's just say Lisbon Portugal and then you uh, are teaching someone who's in South America different time zones get paid you can keep traveling around the world people don't give a shit like where you're located uh, I, I've had clients in the past that knew that I was traveling the world and stuff like that but they didn't really care they just think oh oh that's cool it's just like I, I wouldn't say it, it's in their reality it's just like and it, these to be fair these people are uh, very the old agey so the traditional life so the fact that I'm just traveling around just like oh, okay that's cool I, I wish I could do that but I can't because I'm running a business here a company it's more physical this, this client of mine was a uh, like an e-commerce type of thing like a wholesale supply so he really needs to be there um, so yeah I was getting paid uh, uh, $1,500 a month is not that much if you have a uh, a job in one location but the thing is $1,500 while traveling the world no like liabilities like I, and like I need to be here for example liabilities I mean you have a car that you need to pay uh, you have like a whole uh, a car a car loan has like insurance the gas and all that and then it just compiles up like crazy the expenses just through the roof and if you guys ever there is a like a meme type of thing it, just imagine like a photo of like uh, a traffic jam it's just a lot of people on the way to work and uh, the quote I'm just paraphrasing here uh, says something along the lines of people are buying nice clothes uh, a, a suit to go to a job where they spend all their day working to come back home to nice furniture to watch TV and all this stuff so basically they're paying for that type of experience um, so it's it's very unfortunate um, the thing is that that doesn't have to be you at all you just have to make the one decision that's it which is no I will not do that and then you're like 50% there usually the first step alone is just it's very scary I, I know there's a lot of thoughts that come to mind what my parents say uh, but uh, my boss will uh, fire me I can't find another job and all this stuff but you have to have some self-trust in yourself um, which is a completely different conversation type uh, just to share with you a bit more uh, how to make money while traveling uh, ideas um, so you can a huge popular one run now for the entrepreneurs that are watching this you guys are uh, doing websites and stuff uh, for example, this one guy, he's doing websites in Sweden. Sweden is a very, on the higher tier um, of the exchange rate. So they're, wherever they go, they, they basically, when you travel as a Swedish person, travel becomes inexpensive. But living in Sweden is a joke. Um, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, but the thing is, with this person who was designing websites all he does is literally is living in Sweden occasionally comes to meet his clients uh, face to face to talk a few things but what they can really do is hop on Skype and talk and he has done that and I don't know why but he's still living in Sweden he wants to travel the world he's talked about it for over two three years now but he still doesn't do it God knows why There's so many it's just ridiculous um, but to be fair, he might have his own things going on, own problems or all that stuff. So, if I was him, what I would do is start talking to his client over Skype through email, take the, then take off overseas to basically any country because Sweden is on the top tier and all these countries below, uh, US, uh, Colombia, Brazil, um, China, uh, where else? Russia and all these places are uh, very inexpensive compared to Sweden. Um, so just like that, he can take the, the money that he's making from Swedish uh, currency 
onto another country and live like a king. To, to give you an idea of living like a king, I, I throw this around a lot, but I'm not sure a lot of people understand it, but when you are on the higher tier of the currency, uh, higher tier is like British pounds, uh, Norwegian crowns, Swedish crowns, Danish crowns, and uh, all that, and then you travel to these countries that are down below, I don't mean to, that didn't stop, come out right, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Travel becomes very inexpensive. One way to really hammer this home, the flat I'm living in right now in Spain is 200, I'm paying $250 a month. And I am a 50 meter walk from the beach. I can see the beach from, from my living room and I'm paying $250 and I'm, being, I'm getting paid in a, U, a USD. So also, the Euro and the US, they're like on par now. It's a good thing for people who are getting paid in USD, but if you're getting paid in Euros, it's not the greatest you prefer uh, that they weren't uh, even. Um, I just kind of went on like a long spiel there. Uh, so yeah, back on the websites, that's a job that you can do. It's like a lot, there's so many independent location line of work that you can do that people are willing to uh, pay you and then you can travel around the world. Um, I do have a buddy that's actually working a sales job. He has a 9 to 5, a traditional 9 to 5 and he's uh, very good at his job. So he worked out a agreement with his uh, uh, boss and saying like, hey I really want to travel, I still want to work for you but I don't want to quit so uh, is it cool if I take off overseas and I still make the sales calls, I do still do emails, I still do all that work. All I'm doing is still living in a different uh, country and I'm getting paid. And uh, then basically his boss said, yeah. And he was traveling around for like four months or so, um, doing his job. He didn't need to quit it. If, if you really are someone that doesn't want to break away from that, you can still do the nine to five thing. Um, I can, what I can imagine is your boss wouldn't just be, oh yeah, just go ahead. Just, you can just travel around the world and still get paid. I don't think he'll agree with that, but what you can do is um, you can do like a, a salary cut. If you're getting paid three thousand dollars, and you want to, and you and you tell him like, "Hey, I'm willing to cut my salary by twenty percent, thirty percent." It might sound insane, but it's really not. If you have two thousand dollars a month off of your job, whatever you're doing, you can travel fucking very well. Um, and, th and this little free gift that I'm going to give you at the end of this call, uh, it's going to really blow you away of like how inexpensive it is to travel and how you can really do it. So I, I talked about how I travel off of 600 bucks. I'll share that with you at the very end. Um, so if you can get $2,000 and do like a pay cut, uh, a salary cut, and then you have the location independent, like sure, you're not getting paid $3,000, $1,000 extra, but you have the damn freedom to travel. Why? Why wouldn't you take that? I would take that in a heartbeat. Um, so that's one thing for the whole nine of fibers. Uh, uh, there's so many other jobs, man. Like there's app design. Like any, if, if you can just think of any jobs that don't force you to stick to one location. Oh, graphic design. That's a huge one. If you're a graphic designer, there's Zarek. Um, if you're on this call, I'm not sure. Uh, he was telling like he took off to uh, Hawaii and then Colombia and then all these other places and he was telling me he was concerned that uh, he's gonna run out of cash while overseas and he doesn't do this and that and all those little uh, resistance points that I've, I talked about I asked him what do you do he said graphic designer and I, I, it was one of those like face pump moments because I'm telling him like dude people would kill to be in your position right now your job whatever you're getting paid for to do for your clients. You don't need to be in front of them. You can travel and still get paid while doing it. So you're being paid, you're making money while overseas, while you're traveling the world. All you have to do is like block out an X amount of hours a day just to do a few work, uh, hours of work and you're done. Um, and it takes discipline, of course. Uh, the thing is, I have seen people who have tried to do this, um, but their discipline is just not there. Um, 
they end up going on like just partying all the time and they kind of forget about work, they lose their clients, their income goes down and all this stuff. Uh, so to make, to give you an idea that traveling, to, to make the whole make money while traveling, the whole entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Anyone can try it, but it takes a specific character to actually commit to it. Um, I, like yes, I do live overseas and, and travel and stuff, but the thing is I am very disciplined when it comes to work. I, I work quite a lot right now. Um, so uh, just so graphic design is one. Um, what else? If you have a nice voice, you can uh, go to, uh, I don't know the exact website. Um, if I can think of it, I'll be sure to post it. But if you do have a nice voice and you are like a voiceover type of person, like you want to record your voice for like trailers and stuff, you can go on uh, a website and then people will pay you to read a script and then they're going to use your voice. That's it. You get paid. You can do that anywhere. Um, what else can you do? I wish I had a list of this, man. Um, yeah, nothing's coming to mind right now. Uh, just going blank. As I drink more water, my voice is just killing me. Ah. How are you guys enjoying the call so far? Ah. I'm actually really surprised how many people showed up. I was expecting zero people, to be fair. Um, <clears throat> okay, so to really put it all together, I got a bonus question that uh, was sent in, which I'll read right now. I will be moving out soon and I've decided to do my best to make the business thing work. Haven't really tried hard enough yet. It's just too easy for me to procrastinate when I didn't have any expenses. Anyhow, I love to find a way to build a successful online business while at the same time being able to travel. Any advice? Have you ever... Da -da -da. Okay. So to put this all together, what I've just went through, how to, how much money do you need to save up before traveling the world, uh, how to travel without running out of cash, uh, how to overcome fear of traveling alone, how to easily find uh, people to travel with, and uh, how to make money while traveling overseas. And it's going to be a story, so kind of sit back, relax. So um, as you know, I uh, decided to take off overseas with not much cash. I just did that because, uh, as you know by now, that fear of like my youth is like being taken away from me day by day. I just didn't like that, and I just said, "Fuck it, you know what? It's just not worth it." I took off overseas with what money I had, and now the problem is just okay. We're back. I apologize for that, this internet shit. Thank God it didn't like just cut off. It would have sucked. Um, I'm trying to think where I'm at actually. Oh, okay, the question. Jesse, how the fuck are you gonna travel? How the fuck are you, did you travel if you had so much, uh, so little um, money when you took, first took off overseas. Okay, so when you're in that position right there, when you're in a very, very uncomfortable position as I was, you're forcing your mind to be <laughs> creative. You have to be creative because you're, I think it has to do with like our survival mechanism back in the day is like, hey, if you have no... F okay, Jesus, I apologize, guys. This internet's just not... Not a big fan of me. Hopefully, I'll, let me try to let me try to move out of here. Show you the place as well. Give you a little tour. Uh, weak signal. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. Where's the? Okay. Hopefully, this works. Okay. Oh shit, this is a very raw and uncut, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so, uh, Jesus, I hate how it keeps cutting out. Okay, why don't you work, man? 
Okay, come on, work, work, work. Well, as, as long as it got the first half, I mean, the first hour was good, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep on going, but if it cuts out, it just sucks. I apologize for that. But that first good hour, I hope you guys got a, a lot out of that. Um, so hopefully, I'm just going to try to continue, and uh, hopefully it just doesn't cut out. Stupid fucking Spanish internet. I'm actually in this cafe because the Wi-Fi wasn't working at my flat. All right. <clears throat> Jesus fucking Christ. Ugh. Okay. So, as you know, I took off with very little money. And then uh, the questions are probably coming to mind. Jesse, how the fuck? Okay, guys. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this short. It's just not working. Hopefully it doesn't cut as I talk and say this. Okay, the winners. I wanted to say are Tyler Jameson. Tyler Jameson. Uh, Emily Morin, Daniel Le Lelikov, sounds Ukrainian, and then Jacob Applebaum, hopefully I said that right, okay, so, again, Tyler Jameson, Emily Morin, Daniel uh, Lelikov, and then Jacob Applebottom. hopefully I said that right, and uh, also, guys, I have a free gift. Okay, hopefully it doesn't cut out again. Okay, guys, the free gift that I wanted to give you is going to change the game. This is, I was thinking, what's the core fundamentals I need to tell someone so they can travel no matter what their uh, current situation is, financial or uh, anything like that. So what I'm giving away is called the Travel Hack Starters Guide. What you want to do is go to travelhackacademy.com slash starters with an S at the end. And okay, hopefully it doesn't cut out again. Jesus, man. It's ridiculous. Like I was saying, starters, uh, starter hack, uh, Jesus, ah. Uh, travelhackacademy.com slash starters is the free gift I want to give you. And I'm giving you three videos. It's completely for free. Just create an account. You can just watch it all there. It's few hours actually so it's very dense first video is uh, how to uh, take off overseas when you have no money it's gonna really open your eyes that actually you do have money to travel the world no matter what you're current it's working oh really oh it's working wow it's probably gonna cut off fucking soon all right again first video uh, the comments so far. It's ridiculous, man. Then uh, three videos. Uh, what am I gonna show? Um, the thousand dollars per month budget. So I show you actually how to budget travel. I use a thousand dollars per month to make it very easy to understand. Um, I use I break down all my uh, current uh, month spendings, and it will really open your eyes to how. I really hate this Spanish internet. All right, so I show you how to like actually budget travel, and then uh, the other one is I show you how to get like fucking flights from uh, all around the world, and I use the uh, how to fly around the world for less than a thousand dollars as just like a headline, but I show you like wherever you want to go. For the Australians that want to go to Europe, I show you that. If you're from Europe and you want to go to Asia, just like I show you all that my exact process to get get the like amazingly cheap flights and get me around the world without using any freaking flower points or all the shit that you have to do these days like signing up for credit cards and all that nonsense uh, let's see it's still working I'm very surprised um, yeah that's very cool I like it guys I would love to just fucking have this working but All right, man. I'm gonna just dive deeper into my situation uh, when I first took off. Not not much money. Um, so what you're thinking is, how the fuck do you keep traveling if you had very little money? Yes, it's red, so it works. So we can continue. 
thing is, um, I had to look at my options. I couldn't just for for Americans, we cannot fly into Europe and then work there. It just is not it's not possible. We would have to sign up for a work uh, visa, and I did not want to go through that whole route, and I did not want to do the whole uh, traditional jobs and stuff. So my choice was making money uh, online. Uh, there's many other ways. You don't have to do that. I'm not trying to pitch any like make money online course or anything. Um, so that was my option. So what I did was I didn't know much about business or anything. So I spent my free a lot of my time actually learning um, a business. I was like I was sucking a lot of information. But because one thing that travel does give you is freedom, uh, freedom to like really learn about things that you wanted to learn about. You're not you don't have a professor telling you to learn about. Uh, quantum physics and then you have homework assignment on this and that you just decide what you want to do and at the time for me I just I was thinking okay I need to learn more about how to operate an online business I, I don't know all this shit so I just spent a lot of time um, doing that just learning and then working on my business and uh, trying to market that and all that and then uh, so the thing is I had to be very strategic with my spendings because uh, I didn't have much of it, so that's what taught me how to really budget travel, and um, and because of that, I did crazy things like uh, like lining up, like watching someone going to the subway, and what I would do is because there's these like machines that cut you off, so I would like line them up. So as soon as that person with the card who paid, I would go right in after them, and I wouldn't need to pay. So I did things like that. I cut a lot of corners. Um, I did take things to the extreme. Um, also, uh, what else? I was also more hungry for the best deals. I didn't want to do. I didn't want to sign up for like uh, these credit cards to get x x miles. I did not want to do that. So what I did was uh, just went on like a crazy hunt on the internet, just looking for the best deals. How can I get the best flights? Um, where are the best places to go? I was just sucking in a lot of information that has helped me today actually uh, learn quite a lot so uh, the thing is <clears throat> because I put in those hours to learn the whole online business thing um, making mon money on uh, overseas I don't want to say online business I don't want to make it seem like that's the, your only one option um, so with the uh, making money while you're traveling uh, how I did that was I started uh, a website agency, so I was making um, a website for businesses. I was also doing like video animation stuff, and I had no idea how to do this actually. I didn't do it myself. I just uh, like sent it off overseas, and I got that profit margin. So um, because of that, a profit margin, I got to add onto my uh, spend my my travel budget, and because I started learning more about the budgeting. Uh, aspect of it, I could really, really push that pretty far, um, and uh, because of the uh, flight deals, I wasn't paying for very expensive flights anymore, and that just has like compound over time. Uh, so I hope that makes sense, and I'm not sure if anyone's still on, but uh, yeah. Okay, eight viewers. Cool. Well. First things first, I like to really, really thank you for taking the time out to listen to me talk and ramble. Awesome, awesome. Kyra. Still on it. Fantastic. Okay, so people are on. That's so cool. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go through questions now. We're kinda, it looks like we're up uh, over time, but I don't mind answering some questions. So first, Cage. Uh, what advice would you give a person that does not have any skill to make money online? For example, say a person flies into Spain with no money, what would you tell that person to do? Hustle. You need to hustle your fucking ass off because you're in that position where you have no income coming in. You're, you have so much more urgency. You're not going to be fucking laying on your couch just watching like Breaking Bad or some shit like that you're gonna be like okay I need to make this work if I want to continue this living this lifestyle I need to hustle my ass off and if I choose to uh, do the whole make money online you need to learn about it there's so much information right now on YouTube that are giving away free information it's there's so much information out there that's how I learned I, I did take some programs of like 
like how to do the whole online business thing. But it wasn't that great. I learned, I just like learned more information from other people and all this stuff. I was like hungry for knowledge. You have to really hustle. You have to be searching for it consistently. You have to find people who are interested in doing the same things as you. Connect with them and then map, like kind of mastermind, uh, exchange ideas, learn, uh, ask them uh, who they're learning from, and you're gonna be, get a much better understanding. I didn't know jack shit about make money online when I first got started, but because I just wanted to travel and I was willing to do anything to continue that, because I I faced that harsh realization in the reality of living back to reality. Um, I, do, I did not want that. Uh, I, for me, how I view going home is like torture for me. I'm dying on the inside. I need to be overseas. I need to be with my friends that travel around the world. I need to be around different accents. Like, I need to see more. I, I, I just know that there's so much more to the world than my hometown. I, it's just, I, and I also view travel as a way for me to learn. I have learned so much through traveling and the fact, if I, if I can imagine me staying home, I just feel like I'm just stagnating. Yes, I do go home sometimes, but it's just to visit family and I, I want to leave as soon as possible. So uh, to go back to your question, uh, uh, what, okay, a person that does not have any skill to make money online. So basically, search for the information, learn, there's so many free groups, there's so much like stuff on YouTube. Go on YouTube, man, there's so much things. you can. Uh, for example, here's here's a make money online type of thing. You can have someone write a book for you, and then you can get someone to package it into a PDF, and you can sell that for X amount of dollars, just like that. The marketing stuff, much harder. Um, it's easy. It's easier said than done. Let's just say. Um, so I hope that answered your question, man. And uh, what would you tell that person to do? All right. Um, can you tell us some good websites for finding this kind of online teaching website? Thanks. Okay, I don't know actual websites. I think this needs to be like a marketplace. Uh, it's it's not a marketplace that has uh, been born just yet. But what I would do is, you can start um, going onto Google, finding uh, colleges overseas in like uh, like for example Spain or. Um, or Vietnam, anywhere that English is not their first language, um, and then just go to the college website, message their department, uh, try to find a teacher um, that teaches English or so, and then uh, ask him to uh, put up like a, a piece of paper or announce to uh, his whole class to contact you if they want to have ongoing like more help with their English, and like that you. You do that for multiple places around the world, thinking about how many people want to learn English. Um, and also another thing uh, I was thinking about, um, the whole online Eng English teaching. What you can do also is um, you fly into any major city. For example, let's just say Bangkok, Thailand. Um, there's websites like WorkAway where you can actually stay in a person's place and they'll give you a place to stay, a bed, even give you food, all you have to do is teach them English. This can happen in Ukraine, anywhere really if you be more creative uh, with it. You have to go to WorkAway, uh, it's not .com, I forget, just type into Google, WorkAway, and then there's going to be a bunch of uh, listings. Check the city where you want to travel to, and um, you're going to see a, a bunch of job listings of what they want you to do. For example, uh, hostels around the world, um, what they usually offer is you work behind the uh, desk to help check in and all that stuff, maybe clean um, <clears throat> the hostel itself, and in exchange they'll give you a place to stay and food. Food won't be that great, um, maybe it might be good, who knows, but right, just like that you're not spending money. You're not spending money on accommodation or food, like I was in Sweden, pardon me. <clears throat> so hope that makes sense. Great info. Really glad you liked it, Emily. Emily, uh, I'm not sure if you, you got the uh, announcement, but you are the winner of the free consultation. Be sure to send me uh, a message after this. Uh, Winfa, he mentioned internet. Uh, still on. Awesome. So cool to see people on here. Uh, how do you find clients to teach English to? Uh, just talked about that. Okay, guys. Um, Daniel as well. 
Daniel Lilikov, you just uh, uh, joined. I announced the winners, and you are one of them. So, guys, uh, any more questions before I end this call? Jay, I just answer all that. So, once this call ends, you can uh, go back and watch the video, and I uh, shared a, a, a pretty cool strategy that you can use to find clients. You guys just watched me drink water. How weird is that? All right, guys, any more questions? Any more questions? You can list. Yes, I heard it. Okay, awesome. Does that answer your question? Jay. How do you charge? Um, charging is it's, it's, it's tricky. Um, for example, if you are trying to contact colleges that are more prestigious, that it costs a lot of money, like Harvard's around the world, it, you need to have a lot of money to attend that school. So you can get an idea behind it. Uh, or if you like contact colleges that are like community college around the world, I wouldn't say they would have that much. Um, how do you charge? You can also ask. Um, like what their budget is. Okay, my phone's about to die. You ask them what their budget is. Uh, you can do like plans, you can negotiate. Uh, I wouldn't charge, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I would say that, but I was gonna say I wouldn't charge like a thousand dollars, but hey, if uh, you're you're helping a, uh, a Colombian that's related to Pablo Escobar, I don't think a thousand dollars is that much to him. Okay, phone's charging, good. Where is a great place to travel to alone for beginners? Ah, love this question. This, okay, this is the stuff that's more fun. Okay, where is a great place to travel to? I highly, highly suggest Thailand. I love Thailand so much, it's just so much fun. There's, Thailand is like, uh, it's, it's, it's literally paradise for me. Um, there's so many Europeans that flock there, also Canadians and Americans and all that. Five hundred dollars a month? Oh, that's 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 good. Five hundred dollars a month, Jay? Yeah. If you can do that, four sessions, one hour a week, and you get two clients, that's a thousand dollars a month. You can travel very well. So, going back to that free gift, be sure to like uh, create an account. It's completely free. Travelhackacademy.com/starters, and uh, yeah, you can see how uh, living off of five hundred dollars a month. $1,000, $2,000 is simple and you can really have a fun time. But uh, you think you can get away with that? Fuck yes you can, 500 bucks. Hell yeah. Jesus, I, I had months where uh, I lived off of 300 bucks a month. But, okay, Kyra, uh, going back to your question. Uh, Thailand, because there's just so many people from around the world. It's inexpensive, it's like paradise on the beaches. I go there every two years. So if you do take off um, like early uh, next year, 2017, in January, July, uh, not July, but January, February, I'll be there. Just message me and we can party and all that. It's, it's so much fun. Um, you're going to meet a lot of Australians that go out there. It's just like the hub. Um, there are, if you love to party, that's where you want to go. Um, but. <laughs> If the value is there, Jay, they will. And also, it depends on who your client is. Uh, like I said, if if uh, your client is a son of a millionaire, money isn't anything uh, like it's shit to him, man. He just throws it left and right. Uh, <clears throat> alone, so yeah, Kyra, going back to that, um, that Thailand's a good spot. Um, all over Europe is a good spot, really. Like <clears throat> major cities around the world, they're usually awesome places. Like if a lot of people get attracted to it, <clears throat> but more of the uh, low-key cities are more underrated, which I enjoy myself. Uh, I'm in Tarifa, Spain. Uh, there is a hostel scene, but it's not that big compared to London. is fucking massive. You go to London, it, it's 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 an awesome city. Very expensive. Uh, I would not suggest it. Uh, if you're on a tight budget, but for, for beginners who want to travel alone, 
definitely uh, I would suggest Thailand. Um, you're going to have a lot of fun there. You're going to meet a lot of Europeans, Australians, Americans, South, Amer South uh, Americans as well. And because you're in that party environment, you're going to meet so much people. Add them on Facebook, build that network, and next thing you know, it's just like an automatic thing. When you get to meet people overseas, um, they um, they gonna say, "Oh, if you're ever in my town, if you're ever in my country, be sure to, uh, like let me know, hit me up on Facebook, and then you have a free place to stay." And just like that, because you took off to that one location, you're making new friends. You have a place to stay. You have a personal uh, uh, tour guide. You're seeing the local end of everything. It just blows up. See, this is what exactly what I'm talking about. When you guys need to make the first first step that's it just make that commitment say you're gonna do it and just I call this the leap of faith leap of faith is just like when you really buy that ticket uh, that plane ticket overseas I, I suggest one-way tickets so you have more money for your budget um, the thing is um, there's a lot of sayers and like talkers like oh yeah I really want to travel but I, nowadays how many times I've been let down um, I just don't believe shit anymore I don't believe I don't believe anything until you book the ticket and you show me it so, uh, just to give you an uh, idea of, uh, okay, do you believe you? Uh, yeah, oh, thanks. Uh, I'm seeing. Okay, uh, just to continue with Kyra, uh, Ko Fen Yang uh, Fu Moon Party is insane. I, got, I went there, I think, four, three times now. I'm going to go there a fourth time. Uh, so, check that out. It's Ko Fen Yang, Thailand. It's, it's on the eastern side. A lot of Swedes there as well. Uh, Emily. Um, what do you bring with you in your bag? Like how much stuff do you have? For me, I'm a very minimalistic type of guy. Um, in fact, this jacket, this little slight sweater, I've had this since college. It's over five years old. How I view stuff is like, it has a purpose. What's a light sweater to keep you warm? I could care less what people think of me. It's not, it doesn't look disgusting or anything. It's just keep you warm, that's it. Um, but to, more, to expand more on that, uh, I have like a few pair of jeans, uh, like four shirts, three, two dress shirts actually, uh, shoes, I have dress shoes, flip flops, sandals, um, gym shoes, um, what else, underwears, socks, which don't take that much room. Um, what I would suggest too, this is kind of random, but oh, when you take off overseas, be sure you buy one of those big luggages um, so you just have so much more room and when you before you take off overseas don't try to fill up to the max leave some room there because you're gonna want to buy this and that while you're overseas the thing is when I tell people not to buy anything overseas this is coming from a person who's seen people just jam-pack their suitcase to the max and then they buy this and that and then uh, their suitcase is over weight now they have to pay like 45 bucks extra and it's just it's just a pain in the ass um, so, a really good question I always ask myself when I'm packing is, do I actually want this or do I need this? So, for example, do, I had uh, someone who is a huge fan of owning Nike, Nike shoes, like Jordans and stuff. He has like seven pairs of Nikes. Do you really need seven pairs of Nikes when you're taking a trip overseas? No one can give... No one gives a shit about what you're wearing on your shoes, really. Like, no one cares. It's just a lot of people. It's, it's just stupid. So that's a good uh, example for: Do you actually need it, or do you want it? He just wants that seven pairs of Nikes to. I don't know. That's his hobby or show off. Who knows? But uh, and realistically, you just need one or two. That's it. <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah. Okay, let's see what else. Great info. What kind of confused about though? How can you teach English thing if you don't speak the language? Well, the thing is, uh, Jay, um, the younger demographic people around their twenties, uh, I would say most of them know English like pretty all right. But the people who want to get better at it, people who are more ambitious, um, those are the people you want to target. So you kind of want to screen them out. Uh, ideally, you want people that know someone. Like for, if you go to, um, 
Oh, well, let's see where uh, Spain. Uh, people my age, when they were uh, like five or seven or so, they weren't really uh, taught a lot of English, but they they really needed to go out of their way to um, get, become better at it. And how people do that is like um, work like Europeans. They they take off over to, for example, like Australia, the U.S., or actually everyone really. Uh, uh, to England to learn English. All right, guys, I have like five minutes. I'm gonna push this to the very bitter end. Kyra, thank you. Thank you for joining. I really hope uh, you got something out of this call. All right, guys, I have five minutes left. Any more questions? Any more questions? <clears throat> Jeez, my voice is killing me. All right, it's like 1, 120. Past my bedtime. All right, Jay, I have a cousin that lives in Spain. Exactly, man. See, you got to just be more creative with it. You, the answers are all there. You just have to commit to like, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this. Once you just commit, your brain is going to give you all the answers. So just like that, oh yeah, I have a cousin that lives overseas in Spain. She's well connected in Spain. She probably knows people that want to like learn English. Boom, just like that. You found like, if you can get like two, three, four clients, hang out 500 bucks, man, you got $2,000 a month just for talking four hours a week. Uh, you're living the, the dream if, if you make that happen, man. All right, great conversations. All right, guys, is there anything else? All right, guys, if you guys are just joining us, uh, the free gift, uh, all you have to do is just, uh, it's completely free, 100%. All you have to do is just uh, hop on to travelhackacademy.com slash starters. Um, and uh, you just create a free account. It's it's showing you uh, how to take off overseas when you have no cash. Um, how to book the cheapest flights. I break down like like seven or eight different flights. No matter where you are in the world, I show you how to get the best flights. Um, no no need to sign up for uh, credit cards and all that shit. Um, next, uh, I show you how to actually travel and budget. Um, so. Uh, I, I use the framework, so if you can really implement that, what I taught in these three, these are the foundations that will take you, you can take off now, you can take off tomorrow, whenever you want, if you just implement these three videos. So one, you have the cash now to travel the world. Two, you have the, you know the, uh, the cheapest deals on flights, you can just take off now. And then three, you know how to budget pr uh, properly, and you can go home whenever you want, you can just fly wherever you want. Just like that, man. Those three videos right there. Game changer. Completely for free. Travelhackacademy.com slash starters. So uh, just create an account for you, like I said. You have a friend that um, would benefit from it. Be sure to invite them. Share them the video. Share, share with them your login details or I don't give a shit. Share this knowledge. I want to I wanna help out as much as possible. <clears throat> Alex, you're such a troll. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Three people watching. So, uh, any more? Five people watching. Any more questions, guys? The guys who just joined, Tim Phillips and Jay Lima. Uh, I have less than a minute to go, so I can quickly answer your question. Otherwise, it's going to shut off. Otherwise, uh, really appreciate you guys hopping on this call and listening to me talk for fucking 90 minutes. Uh, I, ho I really hope you guys enjoy this. I really appreciate that you took the time out to watch this. I um, really hope you got a lot out of it and it really opened up your eyes um, how, how, much, how easy it is to just travel the world whenever the fuck you want, really. Um, a lot of bits of golden nuggets in there. Uh, 
things that I wish someone taught me when I first took off, before I took off overseas. And uh, yeah, it's coming to an end in less than 20 seconds. So you can turn off the video now. It's all good. I won't be insulted. We can just listen to this music together. Eight, seven, six.